Hello everyone, this is Kami, and welcome to a new episode of this Adobe InDesign CC course for beginners. In this chapter, we're going to talk a little bit about how to identify and manage our panels in InDesign CC. Now, in the previous course, we've seen a little bit about the layout of our program, and we have seen that there are practically three sets of panels, right? First one here at the top, a second one here on the right, and a third one on the left. Now, apart from these three visible sets of panels, there is another place where we have a complete list of all our panels in InDesign. And that is located here in the main menu, in the window menu. So if we click on window, here is our list of panels, out of which we see that three of them are uh, activated because they are checked, right? And the last one is not actually a panel, it is our blank document, right? Untitled, okay? So, as we can see, we have three panels that are selected or checked. So let's play a little bit with them and identify them, right? First one is the control panel. As we can see, it's activated. So, now, um, if we wonder which one is the control panel, Let's put it to a test. Let's deactivate it. So we click on it and there it is, right? The panel here at the top disappears, which indicates to us that the control panel, which is now deactivated, is the one at the top. So let's reactivate it, right? Because we're going to need it. So we need it to be uh, constantly present. Good. Second one is our pages, pages panel unselected and ooh, what happened something happened here on the right something disappeared right so we go back pages and here it is this panel here is the pages panel identified check next the last panel is tools hmm I wonder what's next of course the panel here on the left is our tool panel or our toolbar if you want right so let's uh, reactivate it because it's of course very useful Good. Now, let's uh, focus our attention a little bit on the panel here on the left, uh, on the right, excuse me. As we can see, it's not just a single panel. As we can see, there are several panels, right? We have pages here at the top. We have color here in the middle and swatches here at the bottom. So there are actually three panels in one large bar, so to speak, right? Uh, what else do we see? We see that not only do we have the pages panel here at the top, the first one is not only the pages panel, we also have layers, here it is, and links. So there are two more panels which are in the background, right? The pages panel is in the foreground and it appears here in the window menu as activated, right? Now what happens if we click on layers? Uh, we bring it practically to the, to the foreground and pages and links go back, go to the background, and if we go to the window uh, menu, here in the main menu, as we can see, pages appears deactivated and layers is now active, right? Makes sense, right? And if we click on links, pages and layers are now in the background, and we check it out in the window, as we can see, links is now activated and the other two have been deactivated, right? Same thing goes for stroke and color, right? Two more panels here uh, on the right. If we select stroke, obviously color goes to the background and it will appear here as unselected, right? Good. Now, let's see what we can do with this uh, panel here on the right. This is practically um, the default uh, view, right, of the panel. This is how it appears when we open a new um, a new document, when we create a new document and we open InDesign for the first time. This is how our panel appears. But as we can see here on the right, we have this um, double arrow pointing right. And if we uh, if we get our cursor closer to it, we, we see it says collapsed icons. If we click on it, as we can see, our six panels have been reduced to icons, right? Here we have pages, we remember, then we have layers, now links, then we have stroke, color, 
and swatches, right? So basically the same panels that we had here in the default view, just minimized, right? Minimized so we can only see the icons. Now, if we have it like this, minimized, right? It saves space, so it's, it's pretty uh, good to work with. Uh, but of course, uh, we can uh, we can play with it. We can play with its size, so we can maximize it a little a little bit until uh, we can also see the names, right? If uh, the icons don't help, and uh, if we want to avoid confusion, maybe we want to make it a little bigger so that we can see that this icon here represents the pages, uh, panel, layers, links, strokes, and so on, right? But let's go back to the icon view, and let's click on the first icon on the pages. And here we see that our our panel, our pages panel, alongside the layers and the links, so all three, the three and one panel, appears. But the other ones, of course, uh, are not activated. So uh, if we talk about the default version, we had here the entire, um, all the panels, right? All the six panels were activated, were visible without their options, right? But now, if we only click on one icon, on the pages icon, we only get the pages panel, right? So. An interesting thing that we can do with, with the panels in this particular view, so in icon view, if we, uh, if we select each and every one of them, is that we can change their size and shape of the, of the tiny window, right? As we can see, we can change it, we can make it bigger, longer, right? smaller and longer perhaps, uh, thinner and longer, whatever whatever combination of uh, size we want and shape, right? And as we can see, we have this double arrow, right? Double arrow pointing up and down here uh, on the top uh, left corner. If we click this one, what happens is we can see uh, our panel returns to its original size and shape, right? So the original size and shape of the panel when we click on the icon is this, this particular one, right? If we click once again on it, it takes us to the size and shape that we had chosen when we modified it, when we modified the original size and shape, right? So the last one I did was this uh, longer size of the panel, right? So it takes us to, uh, to practically the previous modification that we have made to the size and shape of our panel, right? Press it again, it takes us to the original size, right? So it gives us a choice, practically, how we want uh, our panel to look like. Now, let's take this back to the default view, right? Remember, uh, the two arrows which are now pointing left, right? We click on them, and here we have the default view with all the panels here lined up, right? All the panels. And let's see something very interesting. Let's assume, for example, that we want to work with two panels, like, for example, the pages and the layers panel, right? As we can see, since they're located on the same line, so they're practically uh, three tabs of the same um, panel, uh, the moment when we click on one, so we activate one tab, obviously the other two uh, become inactive, right? So practically we cannot have two tabs active at the same time. So how do we solve that problem? We want to have pages and layers both active. This is a very interesting um, uh, option that InDesign gives to us. So we click on pages on the pages tab and we drag it out, right? We simply drag it out and we turn it into a floating uh, panel. Here it is. We can place it wherever we want on our workspace, right? And here's a little trick. Let's say we want to put it here on the left next to our little toolbar. What do we do? We drag it all the way here. And what happens? When we get close to the toolbar, our toolbar turns blue, bright blue, right? We have this bright blue line right here. This indicates to us that if we let go right there, what does it do? It attaches our pages uh, panel to the toolbar, right? Or the tool panel, right? So now they're attached and we have our, our pages panel and our layers panel both activated. So we can work with both of them at the same time, right? Hooray, mission accomplished. 
If we don't like it here, if we think it's too crowded, we simply click and drag it out, right? For the moment, as we can see, it keeps the size and shape that it had when it uh, got attached to the toolbar. So it's a uh, very long, right? It's long and thin. But let's say we've changed our minds and we want it back. We want it back here on the right. What do we do? We bring it closer to the right and as we approach its original location, as we can see, it turns bright blue once again, which tells us that if we let go, it attaches it right back to where it was. And of course, we can change, we can reorder them, right? Because if we remember correctly, pages was first, right? Then came layers and then links, right? So here it is, it's back where it belongs. Good. Now, one more thing that is important to discuss about the, uh, this panel here on the right is that um, when we select a certain panel, like pages, layers, links, whatever, pages for example, we have here options related to the particular panel, right? So we have edit page size, create new page, and delete selected page, right? So if you click on this icon, create new page, as we can see, it automatically creates a new page. Click again, a new page, right? So we have a spread right here. Click on this and we delete the selected page. Here it is, back to our original page. If we click layers, we have here layer related options, right? Create new layer, delete selected layer, etc. Links, options related to links, which are of course unavailable since we have no links specified on the page, no text, no links, no, no, no link related information, right? We go to stroke, as we can see we have a lot of information uh, related to stroke. Color, the type of color that we're using uh, at the moment, CMYK, right? Swatches with a lot of information related to swatches, right? Now, uh, let's go back to pages and see some other interesting thing that it's good to remember. If we go to the top right corner, right underneath these this double arrow that we remember, we have this other little icon and if we click on it, what do we see? more information related to pages, insert pages, duplicate, spread, new master, we're going to talk about master pages later on in the course, right? So page related options, right? We go to layers, we click the same icon, we've got layer related options, right? So more options here by clicking on this little icon on the top right. So this is pretty much all the information uh, that, are, that it's important to remember about uh, where we find our panels, what they look like, what we can do uh, with them, how we can play with them, right? Let's remember all our panels are to be found here in the window menu, in the main menu, right? We have all these panels, some of them, of course, inactive. We only have three panels activated practically. And all these other many, many, many panels which are inactive, right? So, for example, uh, this effects panel, nowhere to be seen, right? It's inactivated. So let's activate it. Here it is, right? Effects panel, get rid of it. Now let's go to for example, extensions panel. As we can see, if we uh, select the extensions panel, we don't have to click on it. It opens up two more sub panels, so to speak, right? Adobe Exchange and Cooler. Uh, if we go to, for example, styles, here we have five more sub panels, right? To, um, to choose from, for example, object styles tiny panel here that has to do with object styles. All these panels practically are not visible to us, but they are available to us from the window menu. And if, for example, we want to use them in a particular project that we have, what do we do? We select them here, right, from the uh, window menu. We select them and once we have them here, we can, of course, as we remember, play with them, place them here on the left or here on the right, right? wherever we want, we can place them, or we can leave them here, right, in the workspace, wherever we want, we can play with that. So, this was all about our panels in uh, InDesign CC. I hope you had fun. I'm gonna leave you now to, uh, to practice on your own, to customize your own page uh, however you want, think about all the panels that you're going to want to use, choose them, 
choose random p uh, panels just to check out how they how they work right place them wherever you want uh, minimize and maximize them move them around and of course I invite you to check out the next chapters where we're gonna delve even more into the secrets of InDesign and see you next time